Hello. Go to one place, they got a bunch of statues, all this, 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 this God, that God. Finally got one, the unknown God. They show up and say, hey, we've come to declare him unto you. <coughs> Amen. <clears throat> all right. And so, by many signs and wonders. Remember when they, whenever they got persecuted, they didn't say, oh, Lord, we, we, we just did exactly what you told us to do. And, 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 and they made fun of us. They, they beat us. They went to their own company and reported all that the chief priests and elders had done unto them. And then they began to pray. Now, Lord, behold their threatenings. Amen. And then what they say? Then say, give us grace to bear up under this persecution. That's not what they said. They said, grant unto thy servants that with all boldness we may speak thy word by stretching forth thine hand to heal in the name of thy holy child, Jesus. Take it up a notch, Lord. Amen. We're not, we're not going to back down because of a bunch of persecution. We're going to go stronger. You mess with us, we'll, we'll get all, your, all them people you're trying to hold in captivity healed. We'll get the devils cast out of them. Amen. 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 We'll put the devil in a corner where he's like, leave him alone, guys. Leave him alone. They're, they're, they're messing up the business. Hello? Y'all here? You're going home. All right. Acts 940. Um, well, it's actually, let's pick it right where we left off. You know, they, they all get saved. <coughs> now, Joppa. A certain disciple named Tabitha, which is by interpretation called Dorcas, this man, woman was full of good works and alms deed, which she did. It came to pass in those days that she was sick and died. And then when they washed her and laid her in the upper of chamber, for as much as Lydda was nigh to Jada, Joppa, now here, <laughs> word gets out. It got over to the next town. There's something going on over there. This guy named Peter is over there, and I mean, this whole town saved. The other town got saved. Now, they got somebody over in their town. She dies, and they send over there. Hey, go. Hey. Folks, the church needs to be heard of. And don't you let Facebook and Instagram <coughs> and TikTok and um, CNN the Communist News Network, <laughs> MSNBC, born of the evil empire. Y'all hear you going home. Who's the other one? CNBC. Uh, of course, NB <laughs> NBC's got a bunch of them. Narcissist Broadcasting Company. Tell you, because the, the world's coming out, and they're 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 filthy, hate the church, and we begin to think, you know, is that how everybody feels? It doesn't matter if that's how everybody feels. They're operating under the spirit of disobedience. Are you here? And we're operating under the power of the Holy Ghost, and what they got is no match for what we have. It doesn't, it can't stand a light to what we have. As a matter of fact, they're darkness and we're light. And they'll, they'll say this and they'll say that, you know, the church is irrelevant. Just know this. That's just because the devil got a big loudspeaker. Hello? The devil's like, it's just like um, when Philip went down to Samaria and preached Christ. And there was a certain sorcerer who bewitched the people. Had them all under his control until the miracle signs and wonders started happening. And the supernatural church stepped up. See, that's the key. The supernatural church stepped up. Forget arguing with people. Forget having debates on Facebook. <coughs> Forget, you know, <clears throat> sitting around mad because they, they took God's name in vain and said, blank the church and all this kind of stuff. Come out and call you a hater. That's all right. You go ahead and do what you do. We're going to do what we do. 
And we're going to do it in the power of God. Amen. And we're going to withstand the persecution. And we're going to withstand the assault. As a matter of fact, we're, going to, oh, we're just going to take over. We're going to run rush side right over the devil's crowd. Amen. Hallelujah. We're going to be walking out the door going, look out, devil, here we come. We're going to put you on the run. We're going to run you out of town. We're going to tear your kingdom down. Amen. Little military oh, yeah. step song. Yeah. Amen. It's just time. It's time. It's time the church rise up. Yeah. It's time for the church to say enough is enough. Yeah. And stop being told, go get in your corner. Go hide. We don't want to hear from you. I don't care if you want to hear from me or not. Amen. Amen. I don't listen to you. Amen. I don't obey you. I don't follow you. The master, the head of the church, the king of kings and the Lord of lords has commanded to go into all the world and preach the gospel. Glory to God. I don't care what your penny any self has to say. Amen. I answer to a higher power. Amen. You better get out of the way. You might get run slam over and become part of the pavement. Amen. 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 Oh, you're a hater. You're a ha Oh, shut up. No, not the person. The devil in them. <laughs> Remember Peter told him, not so, Lord. And Jesus said, get behind me, Satan. He wasn't talking to Peter. He was talking to that spirit that was operating in him. Amen. I'm trying to get loaded back out there again, sharing, saying, we're here, we're here. <laughs> Join us. But it's not, okay. Anyway, Glory. The church is no longer going to be able to function in the wimpy stage. The church cannot function in the make everybody happy stage. Are you here? That's not what we're called to do. Oh, we're supposed to love everybody. I do. And my job in the realm of love is to get you out of hell. Amen. Hello. Amen. This loving you to hell is not going to help you. Well, they died and their sin and went to hell. But I walked in love with them while they went. And you're going to have to answer to the master. Because God loved the world so much that he gave his son to redeem them, and you picked up some worldly narrative of what love is, and that mean, meaning that you accept whatever they do and however they live, and never say anything about it because it's judgmental. They need to be shaken to the core. They, they need to be like Peter. When Jesus gets up and preaches, and he gets finished preaching in the boat, and Peter says, depart from me, I'm a sinful man. He said, from this day forward, I'll make you a fisher of men. Glory, Glory to God. Hello. The love of God is not tolerance. It's not acceptance. It's not saying what you're doing is okay. The love of God says, I have an answer to the sin you're in, and I have a way of getting you out of it. Amen. 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 And I love you enough to tell you. And it may tick you off. You may gnash at me and gnarl at me. But I'm telling you the very thing that will deliver you. Amen. And it's not this bunch that says do what you want to do and hang what you want to hang. And we're going to put in, you know, ministers that will preach what you want to hear so you can go to hell happy. Read some of the great uh, philosophical minds in history. Their dying words will shake you. Because just right before people die, they, they see into eternity. And you've heard, you've heard nurses give accounts. They could always tell somebody was a Christian or not when they died by the look on their face. There was such peace and tranquility. And the ones that weren't had terror on their face when they, closed, when they died and took their last breath. Because they got right before they left their body, they saw eternity. And it was too late. It was too late. And we got a, a narrative in the church today that says, you know, tolerance and we, you know, um, everybody needs love. I heard one person say one time, you know, well, everybody needs love. They don't need perverse love. That's not love. 
Actually, it's lust. It's perversion. It's not love. Well, God made, no, God did not make you that way. Hello? The Bible says male and female created he them. He didn't create Shem. He created them, male and female. He don't, it's not, there's no confusion. But the world has this narrative. And the church is sitting back. And we're playing games because we want numbers and we want dollars and we want this and we want that. And we want popularity. And, you know, and we want to be liked by everybody. Now let me tell you something. And you look in the book of Acts, the people in power and the people in authority and the popular people didn't like the church. But the hurting, the cast aside, the sick, the maimed, the oppressed loved them because they brought them a message of freedom. The rest of them wanted to kill them because they lost their money funnel. They lost their power structure. And here comes the church. They even say it when, when they went to um, Ephesus where the goddess Diana was. They said, we're in danger of losing our whole living over these guys. Yeah. Because they're out there preaching the gospel, and it's going to mess up their whole. I mean, they, got, they all had a livelihood making little statues of Diana. And here are these guys coming in preaching Jesus. They get ready to go bankrupt. What they didn't know is they could have gotten saved and God would have made them prosper. Yeah, right. Amen. And it came to pass in those days that she was sick and she died. And when they were watched later in a chamber, and as much as, uh, for as much as Lydda was nigh to Joppa, the disciples had heard that Peter was there. They sent unto them two men, desiring him he would come with not delay, but would come to them. Hallelujah. And then Peter arose and, with, and went with them. And he was come. They brought him into the upper chamber, and all the widows stood by weeping and showing the coats and garments which Dorcas made while she was with them. And Peter put them all out. All right, now listen, they, all, they ain't in faith. There ain't an ounce of faith in that room. Not with them. They're all, they're all in sorrow. They're all sad. They're all, you know, sitting there going, oh, but she's gone. You know? You know, maybe Greyhound, you know, thank God, what, thank God and Greyhound, she's gone. You know, maybe, you know, whatever it was, that she's gone. Now, hollow notes, she's gone. All right. Some of you got to be old enough to know that. But he put them out, kneeled down and prayed. Turned aside to the body, said, Tabitha, arise. She opened her eyes, saw Peter. She sat up. He lifted her up, and when she called the saints and the widows, presented her alive. And it was known throughout all Joppa, and many believed. We're getting people saved right and left by miracles. Two miracles? Two. Now, the early church had the apostles and the primary initial disciples doing most of the miracles. But that began to change. And that was supposed to change because it was supposed to have everybody. Amen? You need to get bold. You need to pray for boldness. And you need, you maybe you're in a grocery store and somebody's in there and they start talking about how this and that. Don't go, well, I'm so sorry. I'll say, I'll pray for you. Don't say, I'll pray for you. Pray for them. Now, here's what, you know, if you want to say, well, I'll pray for you if you don't mind. And most people go, yeah, I would appreciate it. They think you're going to go home. Go for it. I've done it right there in the grocery line. In the name of Jesus. Now, some people may not. I didn't care if they liked it or not. I won't. If they didn't like it, tough. Go and get another line. This person has a need. I know the God can answer their need. I know the God that has an answer to what they're going through. I know the God, hallelujah, who wants to minister to them. And so they get healed and they get blessed. They get ministered to. I don't really care if you and your little devils want to run off somewhere. Now, you can come get in on it if you want to, but I'm not going to stop because it's going to upset you. They're so tolerant of everything except the Word of God and Christians. Hello? 
Now, somebody could have been going there, well, you know, um, I got my little book from Hare Krishna. Or I got my little Mooney pamphlet. Ching, 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 ching. Hello. We, we can talk about the Dalai Lama. But you start talking about, we can talk about Muhammad. You can talk about anything. You mention Jesus, people get, devils just start. <laughs> I saw something other day. They went. They went. Jesus Christ. I thought. Now, why don't Christians are getting mad? Because if they said they did that with Muhammad, they'd be burning the building down. They draw characters of Muhammad in other countries. They go and behead the people. But you, 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 Jesus is okay to pick on. And why? Because it's the devil. And we and we start going. Well, we better just you know we don't want to stir up any trouble. They that they have turned the world upside down have come hither. We need to be starting turning some stuff upside down. Amen. We need to be shaking some stuff up. Amen. You need to be the one that everybody goes, oh, so they're one of them. That's okay. That's okay. That's okay. Because let me tell you, folks, people will label you, one, label you one of them when you start acting like one of them. But I guarantee to you that when somebody that was in the crowd and they were talking about you being one of them has a supernatural need that only God can fix, they ain't going to the mockers. They're not going to the scoffers. They're going to show up at your doorstep. And they're going to ask you for help. And you be ready. I share this, you know, um, when I worked at Parker's and I got saved. That, you know, aren't y'all glad I worked at Parker's? Because I have all those recipes, you know, and I cook that for y'all. Um, and if you were in the, if you were in the uh, bridal party for this weekend, you would be getting it on Friday night. I got 17 pounds of barbecue, a gallon and a half of slaw, two gallons of potatoes already ready to roll for Friday night. Did it today. It's all good. How do you know? I sampled. Okay, make it, I'm sampling. Hallelujah. But when I worked there, I got saved, and boy, the, the girls, you know, we've talked about this, you know, the, back in that day, back in the early 70s, 80s, late 70s, early 80s, it, you didn't, we didn't have uh, white guys and white girls working in the same area, okay? Because, they th because the excuse was they'll fraternize. They was fraternizing anyway. It didn't matter what color your skin was. Hello? Flesh is flesh. Are you here? <laughs> People, you know, that, that was, that's what they said. So the, the girls were all in the kitchen were all black girls, and they would always call me brother. But I always had that little ink on it. You know, Janie would come in, and she'd have on a pant, pair of pants. Brother, I thought you were safe. Well, your wife was safe. She, she is. Well, the Bible says, thou shalt not wear that which pertaineth to a man. She got on pants. I said, the guy that wrote it was wearing a dress. Ran a robe, you know, but, you know, I was making my point. And they would, they kind of mock me and all this kind of stuff. Then they would come to me in private and say, I found a lump this morning. I'd say, that's okay. I'd step right over here. we step out of the kitchen into a breezeway. I'd lay hands on them and say, in the name of Jesus, I curse that. I command it to wither and to dry up and to leave your body in Jesus' name. I said, now go to the bathroom and check yourself. Come back out. Eyeballs about this big. I mean, all the blood run out of their face. It's gone. I said, yeah, I know. Jesus is the healer. Yes, he is. Hallelujah. Well, then that started next, not, not long after that. And I prayed for him. You know, I got to go home. Let me pray for you before you go home. If you're sick. Go sit in the break room 15 minutes. Come back in 15 minutes. You still feel bad. Go home. But I'm going to pray for you. I'd pray for them. They come back. They, they didn't come out and say, I'm, I'm feeling all right. They go clock in and go back to work. They were healed. Well, then one day they come in and say, Brother, I got saved this weekend. Went to church and got saved. <laughs> we started having revival. Amen. Amen. And they come in and they're talking about they shouting. I say, Glory to God, they shout together. Amen. Your testimony has to be strong. And it comes from walking in the supernatural with God. 
Go over to Acts chapter 13. Now, there were in the church that was in Antioch certain prophets and teachers, as Barnabas and Simeon, that was called Niger, and Lucius of Cyrene, <coughs> and um, Man 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 whatever his name is, which had been brought up with Herod the Tetrarch and Saul. As they ministered to the Lord and fasted, the Holy Ghost said, Separate me, Barnabas and Saul, for the work whereunto I have called them. And when they fasted and prayed, they laid their hands on them and sent them away. So they, being sent forth by the Holy Ghost, departed unto Seleucia. And when from thence they, came to, they sailed to Cyprus. And when they came to Salamis, they preached the word in the synagogues of the Jews, and they had also John as their minister. And when they had gone through the Isle of Patmos, they found a certain sorcerer, a false prophet, a Jew, whose name was Bar-Jesus, which, uh, which was with the deputy of the country, Sergius Paulus, a prudent man who called Barnabas and Saul and desired to hear the word of God. Now, he's got a demon guy running as his deputy. Got a sorcerer. His right-hand man is an emissary of the devil. But he heard something about these guys he wanted to hear. See, the heart of man hungers for a reconnection with God. Hello? And the devil's offering everything in the world he can to pacify, to placate, to sad, put a salve on that desire to know God by offering and keeping people busy, keeping them uh, physically appetite, yeah, the physical appetites, just more and more and more and more, inebriated. Anything he can do to push people so they can't hear the desire of the human heart to be reconnected with God. And so he's in a, he's in a, high, a high position of authority next to the, um, the governor of that area, what? To make sure that the people would always let astray. Because, you know, we, we get into our, our, our local politics, you know, you know our school boards. <laughs> if you live in Guilford County, you need to vote every one of them nut cases off of there that are of the devil. And there's a bunch of them. If you knew what was being taught in the school systems, you'd go down there and protest yourself. Well, why are they down there protesting? You ought to see what they're teaching in the schools. You wouldn't believe it. They, they had teacher training not uh, a couple weeks ago for new teachers, and Friday was spent all day long teaching them how to use the right pronoun for students who want to be called by a different pronoun. We spent your money, the school system spent your money to indoctrinate people on how they must address a student who thinks they're a girl when they're a boy. I'll tell you how you need to address them. Come out, you lying devil. But Elimus, the sorcerer, for so is his name by interpretation, withstood them. See, when you come with the gospel, you're not, it's not always going to be a free, free reign. The devil's going to rise up. He withstood them, seeking to turn away the deputy from the faith. Then Saul, which is also called Paul, said, I love you. I want you to know that Jesus loves you. And I don't, I'm sorry I offended you. I'm so tolerant of your beliefs. Is that what Paul said? So why we stop doing that stupid stuff? See, when we walk in authority and walk in the Holy Ghost, we're going to do some things that are going to shake some people up. He said, then Saul, filled with the Holy Ghost, set his eyes on him. And I don't think it was like tender, loving eyes. These eyes. Do -do 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 -do, do -do 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 -do. Now I'm getting into Bill and Dick's era. Amen. The guess who said, oh, full of subtlety and all mischief, thou child of the devil. 
thou enemy of all righteousness? Wilt thou not cease to pervert the right ways of the Lord? Now, is that the narrative we hear in the church today? No. Why we got wimpy churches? Because we don't do this. We don't walk in authority. We don't hear from the Holy Ghost. I mean, the Holy Ghost came on Paul. And now, behold, the hand of the Lord is upon thee, and thou shalt be blind, not seeing the sun for a season. And immediately there fell on him a mist and a darkness, and he went about seeking some to lead him by the hand. Stop. Don't read. God only walks in love. He never judges. What do you call that? If that ain't judgment, I don't know what is. Y'all here, you go home. He never, he just loves people. He is not going to put up when the church is walking where it's supposed to walk. He's not going to put up with demon-possessed people trying to stop what we're doing. And we got to get used to the fact that God's going to do some stuff that's going to say, I remember uh, a preacher ministering a number of years ago. He was preaching about a, a, back in the early days of Pentecost. Now, you, you understand now, Pentecostals paid a price to be Pentecostals. Some places they actually took them and tarred them and feathered them and ran them out of town. They, were always, they always got kind of known as the church on the wrong side of the tracks. Hello. Pentecostals were just, you know, like taboo in a lot of places. And um, this there's a Pentecostal pastor in town, and this group came out and um, began to harass the pastor. And they, uh, they took something, and they hit him on the head, the pastor. And um, some, somebody there prophesied, stopped and said, the Lord says, as you have touched my servant, I'll touch you. And like two days later, he was killed in a car wreck and his head was split wide open. Don't, well, that's not God. Don't give me that. I said, don't give me that. Stop with this, this crazy love narrative that God never does anything. God never judges. There's never, ever, 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 ever under grace going to be a correction or a judgment when people are withstanding the gospel. Now, God is merciful, and God will deal with you, and God will walk with you, and he'll strive with you when you're dealing with something. But when you're out coming out as the part of the as, as an enemy of the God and working with the devil and trying to stop his work, he will take you out. Now, let me tell you something. The reason we have Paul today is because the Lord came to take him out. You go read it. That was not a social visit. That was not I love you visit. He knocked him off the horse. And Paul looks up and says, who art thou, Lord? He said, I'm Jesus whom you are persecuting. And then he said this, it's hard for thee to kick against the pricks. Let me put that in modern English. You in a heap of trouble, boy. You in a heap of trouble. He said, what will you have me to do? <laughs> he got saved. It was get saved to go to hell. That was his choice that day. He was getting ready to go, to go out and finish his life preaching the gospel, or he was getting ready to depart and go to hell. There wasn't an in-between moment there. Why? Because he was messing with the church. He was breathing out threatenings, taking people from that way bound to, to the priests in Jerusalem. He was killing Christians. And the, and the Lord said, that's enough. That's enough. Well, that doesn't go along with what I've heard. I can't help what you heard. God loves the world, and God sent Jesus to save the world. But he is not going to let people who are sold out to the devil stop the church from her mission. Amen. And the church needs to stop acquiescing to the world's narrative, which is really shut up and go in the corner. If we want you, we'll come find you. That's really the narrative of the world. It really is. And we really don't want you just so just go shut up and go sit in the corner. 
We even had a president say that we're no longer a Christian nation. We're now a pluralistic nation. A lot of stuff had happened under his administration. Lit the White House up with gay colors on the Supreme Court ruling. And since then, I don't know. Go back and look at the, your timeline of history, folks. When the leader of the nation put in there by the people of the nation connects with something, you unleash spirits. And they've been unleashed in our country. Now, that's only been, what, 12 years ago, 15 years, you know, 12, 8, 16 years ago. In, this in that time frame, we've gone from homosexuality being taboo and still sin to drag queens at our elementary schools teaching our kids how to be drags in elementary school and calling pedophiles minor attracted adults. Hello, come on now. All in that short span. Why? Because the nation put somebody in power and he opened the doors to that. And now, now it's everywhere. It's in your face. It's in, it's, it's, everybody's a tranny and everybody's this and everybody's that. It's in our school systems. They're teaching in the books. They're, they're doing transition for kids and not telling the parents. How did that happen? The church laid back and act like a bunch of weenies. We didn't storm the streets like they stormed Normandy. Hello? And it's time for the church to rise up and say enough's enough. We will not be silent. You, will, you can call me a domestic terrorist if you want to. We will not be silent. And you keep pushing, and I'm going to tell you something, the backhand of the anointing is coming against you. When God's all love, he wants, I'm telling you, folks, you better wake up and get your head out of the sand. Because God has a work, there's a world to save. There are over 7 billion people on this planet right now. And we're over here playing games over whether we can have a homosexual pastor or not. The answer is no. Well, their denomination put them in Ichabod. The Spirit of the Lord departed. He ain't, he ain't, they're not ordained of him. His hand's not on it. Hello? You're indeed on the outside like white at sepulchers, but on the inside full of dead men's bones. Amen. So where is the living church? When are we going to rise? And I forgot where I was in this passage. Do y'all remember where I was? Oh, okay. So he went somewhere waiting, waiting to be led by his hand. Verse 13. I'm sorry, 12. Then the deputy, remember? This was his aide. When he saw what was done, believed. Being astonished. Wait, wait at the doctrine of the Lord. Now, Luke, accounting this, refers to that judgment, that moment of judgment, supernatural judgment on those that withstood the gospel as the doctrine of the Lord. We got people here preaching love, 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 love. All we need is love. Love, love, all we need is, I mean, every time I hear some of these people talk, I think, you are a reincarnated hippie from the Coca-Cola commercial hill. I'd like to teach the world to sing in perfect harmony. Like the honeybees and I mean, whatever else they sang, I forgot. Because they went into Coca-Cola, you know, they, you just want to go get you a Coke after seeing the hippie stance. Who's old enough to remember that commercial? Yeah. Who doesn't remember that commercial? Go look it up on YouTube. Okay. Go look up what Teach the World to Sing Coke commercial. This is out there. I guarantee it's on the internet. Okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You're not on. No. Yeah. He's going to make sure he knows. You folk are old. Oh. That's all right. We got a lot of kick left in us. Glory to God. Hallelujah. We got a lot to do. Amen. 
Praise God. So this moment, this, this really just messes up all this lovey, lovey, dovey stuff and never judge stuff because it's called doctrine. The doctrine of the Lord. You know what the doctrine of the Lord is? You mess with my people or you're in trouble. That's one of the doctrines of the Lord. And see, we don't, we, we don't believe that enough that when we go out, the Holy Ghost has our re-reward. He's, he's got our six. And we're going to go out and do the work of God with the full armor of God. We're going to walk in the supernatural. And if the enemy tries to flank us, they're going to run into the Holy Ghost. Bad deal. Hello. There's a job for us to do, people. There's a community to save. There's a world to save. Amen? There are people who need the supernatural, who don't need to walk into their churches and be told, we're, we're you know, like one guy, I remember Noble Hayes. He grew up in the such and such, the first such and such church. We're not going to call it the domination, but Brother Bill was one of them. <laughs> now, Brother Bill's a full blood full full blown one of them because he got all the different ones <laughs> baptized in the body of Christ baptized in the Holy Ghost baptized in water amen he said everybody that got their name on the prayer board they had a prayer chalkboard and they put the name up for prayer died <laughs> so he began to pray oh God don't ever let my name Get on the chalkboard of the such and such church. Because he knew that was a death sentence. It shouldn't be that way in our churches. It shouldn't be that when, you know, your name gets on the prayer list, you know, that they're, you know, Lord, please prepare the heart of our soon-to-be bereaved sister on the upcoming loss of their husband. Wigglesworth had that happened said he they called for him to go pray for somebody there in london and there was a missionary that he knew of and he, he thought well I'm, I'm gonna stop by and get him you know he'd been a missionary and come off the field after a number of years took him with him and out of deference he uh got to the room he, he allowed this missionary to begin to pray you know just he was older than him and he said he prayed for all the missionaries of the world three times and then you know the man's on the deathbed the wife's out right there in the room and he's going now lord Please prepare the heart of our soon-to-be bereaved sister on the coming loss of her husband. Help her, Lord. And Brother Wigglesworth said, stop, stop, stop him, Lord. Stop him, stop him. He's filling the atmosphere with unbelief and took him and threw him out of the room. Because the wife's over there going, yes, 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 Jesus, yes, Jesus. She's hooking right up with him. See, they're looking to the minister for lead. They're looking for them, people who know how to walk with God. They're looking for them to lead them and guide them. And when you don't know anything about the supernatural, you can't lead them into the supernatural. And he, lay, he was in there about five minutes, came walking out of the room with him. Completely healed. Amen. We don't, our churches have got to stop being the places where there's no power in our prayer. There's no authority in our words. There's no ability in our lives to touch the hearts and bodies of men and women and connect them to the power of God and make up every wit whole, spirit, soul, and body. Amen. Amen. I don't know if this is a Sunday morning service or Wednesday night service, but it's a good service. Did we ever make the internet? Okay, good. Somebody's out there watching. <laughs> It never came back on my phone that we were out there, so I couldn't share it. Oh, it finally showed up. Expedition Church is live 30 minutes later. <laughs> That's kind of far behind where I was right now. I'm going to share it. Maybe somebody will see it later and pick it up and watch it. Let me see here. Where were we? Okay, Acts chapter 13. All right. Acts 14, verse 7.
Let us read. Let me go ahead. Verse one. And it came to pass at Iconium, they went both together into the synagogue, so to speak. The great multitude, both of Jews and also of Greeks, believed. And the unbelieving Jews stirred up the Gentiles. See, so the religious folks are always going to get mad at you. Now, let me tell you something. We start, we start laying hands on the sick, casting out devils. People start coming in. The supernatural starts taking place. And people, and word starts getting, you have religious people get mad. They're a cult. No, you're a weenie. You're a wet noodle. You got overcooked in the pot of pasta. You're not even al dente. you just a wet noodle. You ain't no good. But the unbelieving Jews stirred up the Gentiles and made their minds evil affected against the brethren. <clears throat> they did this in, a, in Europe. When, we, when, when people started going over and carrying, you know, Brother Hagin had the book, The Authority of the Believer, and that kind of stuff. And we, people, you couldn't, got some countries, you couldn't bring a Bible in, a Hagin Bible. And they had study notes in it. Because they had got, people had got their head of them and said, um, the Bible says that he might add to or takes away from this book, let him be accursed and nephew. And see, they added to the Bible. Oh, yeah. Because it had study notes in, in, in the Bible. It wasn't part of Scripture. It wasn't, didn't claim to be part of Scripture. They were study notes. But they said, and these people got hold of that before they got there. And they started shutting people down because they wouldn't hear them because they had a, they had a Hagen Bible or a Copeland Bible. They had added to the Bible. They were accursed. Now, you know what it takes? People to start their minds evil against Because they're losing their power structure. Y'all hear you go home. Long time, therefore, abode they speaking boldly in the name of the Lord, which gave testimony unto the word of his grace. Listen to this. And granted signs and wonders to be done by their hands. So they come in, they stirred up a bunch of junk, got all the people's minds shut down, and turned them against them, but they stayed and they kept preaching and then signs and wonders. But the multitude of the city, uh, the city was divided and part held with the Jews and part with the apostles. And when there was an assault made both the Gentiles and also the Jews with their rulers to use them despitefully and to stone them, they were aware of it and fled to Lystra and Derbe, site, cities of Lycodia, Laconia, and into the region thereabout. And there they preached the gospel. And there sat a certain man of Lystra, impotent in his feet, being a cripple from his mother's womb, who had never walked. The same heard Paul speak, who steadfastly beholding him and perceiving he had faith to be healed. Let me ask you something. Bible says in Romans, the 10th chapter, that faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God. Here it says that Paul preached, he, he heard Paul preach. And then Paul perceived he had faith to be healed. How could he have faith to be healed unless he preached healing? He had to have preached healing in the name of Jesus. Had to. That's why that man had faith to be healed. Because he heard Paul preach. And, um, he said with a loud voice, stand up right on that feet. And he leaped and walked. <laughs> and when the people saw what Paul had done, they lifted up the voices, saying in the speech of Laconia, the gods are come down to us in the likeness of men. And they called Barnabas Jupiter and Paul Mercurius because he was a chief speaker. Then the priest of Jupiter, which was before the city, brought oxen and garlands unto the gates and would have done sacrifice with the people, which when the apostles Barnabas and Saul heard of it, they rent their clothes and ran in them on the people crying and saying, sirs, why do you these things? We are men of like passions with you and preach unto you that you should turn away from these vanities unto the living God, which made heaven and earth and sea and all the things that are in, who in time past suffered all nations to walk in their own ways. Nevertheless, he left not himself without a witness and that he did good and gave us rain from heaven and fruitful seasons, filling our hearts with food and gladness. And when these things uh, scarce resisted they the people, they had done a uh, sacrifice unto them and they came, uh, came hither from certain Jews from Antioch and I couldn't even persuade the people and having stoned Paul drew him out of the city supposing he had been dead how be it as the disciples stood around him he rose up and came into the city and the next day he departed with Barnabas and the Derby and when they had preached the gospel to that city and taught many, they returned to Lystra and to Iconium and to Antioch, confirming the souls of the disciples, exhorting them to continue in the faith. Amen. And that through much tribulation, they would enter into the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. Now, see here they went through persecution. People came out against them. You, you, you're going to have people who will persecute you. You better be ready for the persecution because there's a world to save. 
And they had, to, they, they, listen, they left disciples in every one of those cities. They left disciples in every one of those cities. Came back and confirmed them. You hear you've gone home. And, you know, we may have to face persecution. That's okay. They, st they stoned them and left them for dead. Now, I believe, as long as most, pretty much any Bible scholar believes. Remember Paul said this, I knew a man about 14 years ago, whether in the body or out of the body. Um, I know not. Such a man was called up into the third heaven and saw things and heard things unlawful to be uttered. Amen. Whether in the body or out of the body. And he had the vision of heaven. And he saw things that, I'll, I'll say this way, it took him the rest of his ministry through his epistles to get it all out. He couldn't just come back and share what he, when he saw the new creation man in heaven, he couldn't articulate that. It took him the rest of his ministry through his letters to get that revelation out. They believe it happened here when he was stoned and left for dead. That he was called up into the third heaven. Hallelujah. And it became the pinnacle point of the Pauline revelation that we now, we now call the Pauline revelation of who we are in Christ. So even in their persecution, <laughs> Paul got, get, get the revelation that has transformed nations today. The authority of the believer, who we are in Christ, what we possess in Christ, what belongs to us in Christ, what it means to be in Christ. <coughs> Amen. The devil can't win for losing. Well, I killed him. Well, he'd been raised up from the dead. That ain't all. He visited heaven while he was out. You ought to hear what he's teaching now, boss. What do you mean? He's going around telling people they're just like Jesus. He's going around telling people that they have authority over you. He's going around telling people there's a name that's above every name. And when they use that name, uh, they got authority over you. And the devil's going, oh, my, that's, that's a big deal. We, we, we shouldn't have stoned him. Too late. And the people are believing it. And they're using that name. And they're speaking that name. And they come against demons in that name. And they come against sickness in that name. Hallelujah. And they rise up. And they march. And they go forth. And they're walking in that name, praise God. Hallelujah. As the supernatural church. Yeah. Glory to God. Can you say amen? amen? Hallelujah. All righty. Praise God. Well, I'm done. And I went past our time. I'm sorry. Not really. I just say that to make you feel better. To let you know that I was sensitive. Okay. Hallelujah. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise God. Well, it's time to receive our Wednesday night offering. You need an offering envelope. They're on the seat back in front of you. If you're giving through PayPal or Cash App, um, those screens, slides, we're going to slide up on the monitor up there. We have not, we're still waiting on the IRS to, to give us our, a letter back saying that they've received the knowledge that we've changed our name from Faith and Victory Church to Expedition Church. Hallelujah. Once that's done, then we will change our, our tags um, to something, Faith Expedition Church or something, you know, for PayPal and for Cash App. Okay? All right. So, um, Cash App is dollar sign Faith Victory Church without the word and. Uh, it's going to become something like Expedition Church. I'm not exactly sure what they've, they've picked up, but they, we'll have a name for it. Uh, EC Triad or something. We'll have something. And then PayPal is donations at fbc.org. That will be changed over to uh, giving at, F at expeditiontriad.org. Uh, we know that one. I do know that one will change to that. But right now it's the old one. Um, once the IRS had, gives us a letter saying that they've gotten our stuff and they, they've accepted it and they've changed it in their, their records, da-da-da-da-da, Brother Bill's working on that. We, know, we do know St. Louis office got the paperwork. So it's gotten that far. We know that. Now, they move at the speed of no. That's slower than slow. Okay, they just do. Even with eighty-seven thousand extra agents, they still work at that speed. All right, Hallelujah, praise God. But you can give through those means until, and then we will let you know in advance when we change. That's changed, Hallelujah, Father. In the name of Jesus, people give tithe, sow into the kingdom of God. We thank you that heaven's windows are open unto them, and you pour out blessings they do not have room enough to receive. In Jesus' mighty name, Amen, Amen. Go
Go ahead, Brother Joe, receive that from the in-house. Those sending it, go ahead. Thank you for sending your electronic offering. And uh, you be blessed. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Don't forget that um, Saturday, the buddy's getting married. Hallelujah. And um, he takes off on his honeymoon. I get to watch the grand doggy. Get, bl get blue for a week. Hallelujah. Amen. Get, get to have blue back. Blue will be happy. He loves our yard. That was his home up until uh, July, so he loves our yard. You know, my neighbors will be unhappy because he runs up there in the playhouse, looks at him, and barks at him because he can see the street over the fence and the street and all the neighbors' houses up there in the playhouse on the deck. He just stands up there. I mean, he, he, yes, he puts his front paws up on the top rail and stands there, oh, 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 and just, just goes for it. And they get tired of hearing it. We just like, look at that hound sound. <laughs> all right. Praise God. All right, let's stand up. Praise God. God bless you. Thank you all for being here. And um, so good to have Daniel. And it's, it's S. It starts with S. Is it Sabrina? Shana. I knew it started with S. I, it's not Sabrina. I knew it wasn't Sabrina when I said it. I always see her call her darling or something. I did, but Shana. Shana, Daniel, good to see you all. Saw the little guys out there in the hallway. Yeah, praise God. So y'all, glad you all made it over finally. Yeah, sorry y'all missed last Sunday because that's when we had the, you, you were out watching the Raiders get whooped. Hey, you, know, you know, I'm an old Raider fan. I mean, from the Daryl, LaMonica, George Blanda, Kenny Stabler era. Uh, we've had nothing to cheer about in a long time. Huh? You got to watch YouTube just to say, hey, we used to be good. <laughs> I know, I saw, I saw, I saw. I was like, bummer for him. I, I, I know he wishes they would have won, but I, w I was hoping they'd win too. And then the Panthers, they're in a worse boat. There's, there's a sunk. <laughs> All right. Good to see y'all. Love y'all. Be here Sunday. God bless you. Have a great week. Pray for us that we can pull off everything. I'm doing the rehearsal then and have to do the wedding rehearsal on Friday night, so I got to, I got to coordinate all of that serving serving everybody and having all the food hot and ready and da 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 yada 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 and it's an hour away it's not even it's not like it's here it's an hour away and why do you pick a venue like here are we still online we're still broadcasting oh, great <laughs> hopefully nobody's watching <laughs> okay, that might be a